So this is part two. Another way of trying to think of how to raise a score is to think of synonyms. Okay. So there's a one topic here: people and relationships. Describing people, recognizing adjectives, working out meaning from context. Well, people in a relationship can be, you know, friends, uh, family members, uh, sisters. Uh, you know, it can be uh, classmates, roommates, uh, clients. So it's a professional person here. Yeah, there's a professional aspect to it. Okay, so we know what is a client. Colleague or colleagues, employer, employers. To not confuse with employees. So this is a person or organization that you work for. Employers who hire illegal workers. A telephone company is the country's largest employer. Parents. Parent. Parents. Sibling or siblings. This is an important one. Uh, or your brothers and sisters. Some studies have found that children are more friendly to younger siblings of the same sex. Sibling. Rivalry often causes parents' anxieties. The spouse or spouses describing people, how is he? Autonomous, independent, okay? Makes their own decisions rather than being influenced by someone else. Consistent. Consistent is always behaves in the same way, has the same attitudes towards people or things. That you are very consistent, like you don't get distracted, you know how to finish things. Conventional, someone who is conventional has behavior and opinions that are ordinary and normal. Conformist. Cooperative, I would prefer this one. Adjective, if you say that someone is cooperative, it means that you do what they what you ask them to do. Well, it's like team playing. You know, if you work in a company, you have to be a team player to work with other people, blah, blah, blah. Efficient, it's also important to know the spelling of these words. It's an adjective. Productive, efficient. They're able to do tasks successfully. Flexible, someone or something that is flexible is able to change easily and adapt to different conditions and circumstances can be for where to work with who with whom and how and everything so changing your schedule idealistic well they have ideas ideals sorry and base their behaviors on these ideals even if they may be impractical tolerant it's an adjective. If you describe someone as tolerant, you approve of the fact that they allow other pe people to say and do as they, they like. So you're tolerant of people not really be, uh, respecting you. <laughs> or, you know, things like that. You have a lot of patience. You're tolerant. You are, you know, you are open-minded as well. Vulnerable. Very weak. Is now without protection. With the reason that they are easily hurt physically and emotionally. All people are particularly very vulnerable, sorry, members of our society. Vulnerable. And so also you have different exercises. Circle the word that you associate with family relationships. Underline the words you associate with professional relationships. So client, professional, parent, family, sibling, family, colleague, professional, spouse, family, employer, professional. This is a great way, you know, all the different exercises here. It's a great way for you to build up also new vocabulary. Okay, there's a lot of this thing stuff here. So there is also an expression, yeah, in other words, you know, if you explain something and you want after a while simplify what it just says, like, well, in other words, I like chocolate, you know, whatever. So that's the least thing. So health. And again, you have a lot of vocabulary, okay, disease, infection, etc. The words below describe different disorders, circle the word that you associate with rich countries. Let's say uh, heart disease, maybe allergies, obesity, stroke, addiction, poor country, infection, uh, dehydration. Okay, so <coughs> health, 
health conditions associated with wealth are sometimes referred to as diseases of affluence. These include diseases which are not communicable, such as type 2 diabetes, cancer, and stroke, as well as alcohol and drug addiction, obesity and some allergies. Risk factors for these conditions are associated with the lifestyle of the economically prosperous, in particular, physical inactivity, easy availability of meat, sugar, salt, and processed foods, excessive consumption of alcohol and tobacco, and lower exposure to infectious agents. The diseases of poverty, in contrast, are predominantly infectious diseases such as HIV, AIDS, Nah, it touched also, uh, you know, first world countries. Um, tuberculosis, malaria, diarrheal diseases, risk factors for these conditions include overcrowding, inadequate sanitation, malnutrition, and inadequate access to healthcare. Millions of lives could be saved every year by addressing these underlying problems and by simple preventive measures such as immunizing the population against common infectious agents, vaccines. Okay. Also here, in a reading exam, you may have to indicate whether statements about a passage are true, false, or not given, not mentioned. You can often recognize a true statement if you can match it to a part of the passage that expresses the same idea in different words. Okay, so allergies are common in wealthy countries, allergies are common in affluent countries. That's in this one. Underline words in the passage for exercise two, which could be replaced by the words in the, board, the, the bold below. This is bold. Minor skin disorders do not normally require hospital treatment. Disorders. Mm -hmm. Number two. Yeah, it can be infection. Misuse of prescription drugs is a growing problem. Addiction. Germs can uh, cause stomach upsets. Vaccinating children against measles has reduced the prevent uh, prevalence of this disease. You know, great work, great work here. We can talk about that. And this is what we have to work on. True, false, not given. So you may have questions. And, you know, this kind of stuff. They don't give too much, but it would be interesting to work on the vocabulary here. Okay? So I'll send it to you right now. Because uh, it seems like I'm uh, you know, a bit, uh, you know, distracted with a lot of stuff. And... Uh, you have a beautiful evening. I think it's it's 10 p.m. now here, so it should be like uh, 12 or 1 a.m., 12 p.m. or 1 a.m. for you. You have an excellent night, and I'll see you Thursday at, uh, which is like 9.30 for you, okay? Take care, Diego, and sorry again for the other five. Take care.